So hello everyone, welcome to Arbitap, and guys, welcome to this another inspiring story for the success story session for the RBI Grade B 2023 examination. If I talk about the person who is sitting in front of me, so he is one person who could be an inspiration inspiration for those candidates. Either you are giving UPSC because he has given UPSC, he is from a non-commerce background, he is now a working professional working in a bank, cleared the RBI Grade B examination in his fourth attempt. So anyone i can say his journey should be enjoyed by the most aspirants because he covers every aspect that the students generally face in this examination so welcome to this session shrinath thank you sir thank you so much so first of all do let us know about little bit about yourself um sir i come from the state of kerala and i have uh, completed my btech in civil engineering uh, from college of engineering trivandrum in 2016 After that, uh, I got a placement in a, I mean, a company in Qatar, and I worked there for almost some one and a half years, or maybe around nineteen months. Then I came back for preparing for UPSC and other exams, and uh, I initially gave attempts for UPSC mainly. With my main focus was on UPSC, and uh, I mean, after some after few attempts, I started focusing completely on RBI Grade B and other public sector bank exams. And uh, in between 2022, I just got selected in Union Bank of India as a bank PO. <clears throat> And uh, now this year, luckily, I was able to clear the RBI Grade B exam in my fourth attempt. So your journey, as I was explaining, it's a it's a full and full of masala based tadka based journey. If I talk about yes, you, sir. so if I talk about if I just go back here, the this first decision that you have made because you were settled in Qatar, you were doing good in your field. So what was the first decision initially when you have taken when you have decided that what was the push factor that when you have decided that you want to come here and prepare for the civil services. Um, so one thing is that um, my family members, especially my fa- parents, actually wanted me to come back to India itself and to try and try to get into some government jobs or any other public sector enterprises. Uh, but I was not confident enough at the time uh, of my college days. So when I got a placement, I just took it and went there. And uh, after working for one and a half years, uh, what I understood was that. Um, the work is good but it is not something i somewhere around i felt that i should actually give it a change i should try into some other profession and, and that is where i thought of uh, i mean thinking of what kind of exam that i could prepare and while thinking of that exams two things came into my mind uh, one is the engin- engineering service since i am from engineering background and the other thing was uh, civil services and uh, i mean i came back with the intention of doing it both but i mean i completely dedicated my time for civil service itself in my initial attempts and uh, the push factor mainly is that i just wanted to work in india that was the main thing because after working in qatar i found that in india itself we could get a better career i mean even if it is in a private sector also we could do some mba and get a good career so definitely coming back come back to india was definitely a, a matter of a priority for me at that time at that point of time and that's what pushed me to take a decision like this Okay, so when you have made the decision to go for the UPSC examination, so how was the journey of UPSC? Because as you have mentioned, you have given three times of UPSC. So what was the initial journey for UPSC, and how was that? Uh, so the journey initially was fine, but the only thing is that uh, after my three attempts, what I understood was that um, my journey was somewhere around. It was not planned enough. because uh, i prepare started preparing for this exam with a lot of misconceptions and kind of a prejudices that uh, we need to sit in front of the books for a hell lot of time like we need to spend around some 15 to 20 hours in front of the books we need to reduce our sleep and like that kind of mentality was there within me uh, and ultimately all these things backfired because uh, these kind of things even though i tried to follow it i was not able to follow it in a very consistent manner and i was getting exhausted uh, i mean along the course of preparation so what i th- thought was that i should actually I mean, after the three attempts, I thought that um, the entire plan was actually a not well planned one, I and mean, the plan was not so good enough because uh, even after three attempts, I was not able to clear the mains. And so the thing is, I felt uh, we need to also move away from the civil service and think about another exams. But in between that, also my seniors who are preparing for civil service also had advised me that uh, there is an exam of a big grade B, even if you are not aware of it. So just look into that exam. It is a equally very good exam, equally promising career uh, would be available even if you go go to the RBI Grade B also. And that is how we started giving the RBI Grade B attempts uh, from 2019 onwards. 
Uh, but the, my first two attempts were actually very kind of a very silly attempts or can call it as a fluke attempts because I never prepared for it. Uh, only after the third, third attempt of my civil service, I understood that the civil services examination is not something that is something aligned with my strength and weaknesses. I mean, my strength actually. Uh, so I thought of completely shifting it and stopping the UPSC and completely preparing for RBA from a third attempt. And that's how that change happened. And if you have just mentioned because you you came to know this thing that after third attempt that it's UPS is not my cup of tea, my not yeah. cup of tea. Yeah. So what will you give advice to those students who are basically because there is a dilemma every year in the person who is preparing for UPSC. As you have said that some of your seniors have given you advice with respect to that RB is another prominent examination mm -hmm. that students must give. So what will you advise to those students who are again in this dilemma? that they are giving UPSC because they have something in their mind that they want to prepare for civil services and they want to be a civil servant. But somehow they are not up to that caliber or they are not getting the desired result what they want. So what is the thing that they should focus on? So one thing is that what I feel is that at some point of time, we also need to be a little bold enough in our decisions. Because even though we might all be preparing for UPSC with a lot of dreams and aspirations along with and you also will be carrying a lot of dreams and aspirations of our family members too. But somewhere around, in case if it is not aligned with our strength or the kind of subjects that we have somewhere in upper edge, it is always better to go and look into something else uh, like RBA in grade B or maybe even an MBA in a reputed institutions. Because I have seen people who have made a very better career in other areas, even after starting, I mean, the starting preparing for UPSC, they dropped it in midway, and then they just got a very good career also, even after that, either in RBA or in SSC CGLs, or many of them have went, also went for this uh, doing MBA in some reputed IAMs. So the thing is that there is always a better option. And the only thing is that civil service definitely it is it has its own unique features. It's a it has its own unique characteristics which gives it a distinct kind of a career. But definitely. Career-wise also, there are a lot of different careers and definitely it is our goal ultimately to have a bold decision that to introspect ourselves and understand that uh, whether it is aligned with our interest, the job profile or the examination both. And in case if it is not aligned, don't hesitate to move away from the decision because definitely as I said before, there are better careers equally as good as UPSC in different ways. Maybe it might not offer the every same perks like the kind of a power or the influence of a civil servant, but still there are very good opportunities of learning and as well as the career growth and other work life balances that is associated with a career like RBA grade B or maybe even MBA or different kind of opportunities. So as you've just mentioned that if there is a something that is aligned with UPSC preparation. So when your seniors have told you about the RBA grade examination and you have just admitted that your first two attempts, it was just like you were just giving it for the sake of giving the examination. Yeah. But what, initial, what was the initial point that clicked you that no, this is the examination which somehow is on a similar interest that you have for the government examination and how that thing helped. But what was the initial, if I talk about the, I will not say pull factor, but what was the initial movement which made you think that this is the right decision. Now I have to shift this examination. I have to shift only towards this examination because as you were mentioning, you were ready for the IES also, IES also Indian Engineering Services. Even you were also thinking about uh, getting the job in your civil services sector, in the private sector also. So what was the initial point where you thought, no, this is the only examination which I have to give? So one thing is that actually for me, I was very much um, kind of, I decided the fact that I'll definitely be preparing for some competitive exams. And uh, after UPSC, what I thought was that when I was looking through the RBA syllabus, especially the prelims, mains, and prelims and mains, I found that it is something that syllabus and the kind of pattern of exam actually it suits me very well because since I am from engineering background, it's mathematics and reasoning part would be something which will be favoring or we can we can say this aligned to my interest or my strengths. So and you have that in your prelims and after that uh, in the case of UPSC also one good subject which I like very much was the economics part. So, and even coming to RBA grade B also in phase two we have economics and uh, portions of finance. So these kind of subjects also actually really kind of, uh, what do you say, uh, aroused my interest into the subject. So what I thought was that the RB grade B exam from the prelims and mains point of view, it actually is a very good blend of what I would like to study or what I would like to prepare because it, can, it consists of those subjects which actually like to use my strength. 
so that is why i thought that this would be the perfect exam that i should try and uh, i started initially preparing for bank exams bank pure because rbi grade b exams are kind of a higher version of a bank exam in terms of the prelims and the mains so that is how i started the preparation simultaneously but the ultimate focus was on rbi grade b exams and as you have just mentioned that you have an interest with respect to finance and management and icsa but then also considering the fact if you look at the finance and management syllabus of the rbi grade b examination it is somewhere completely different from the things which we generally used to read in upsc or even in your banking examination also because esi is or if it about current affairs they are still something that could be related here but if i talk about these topics like management specifically the theories of management and the core management so how easy or difficult it was for you to understand this topics or to manage this topics for this examination uh, sir as i said the topics were interesting but the thing is that of course the study aspect when, when it comes to the aspect of studying uh, definitely it is a bit difficult because it is comp- completely different syllabus subject as compared to my educational background or the things that i have learned and as you have rightly said Uh, economics is the esi part of some more somewhere it is having some overlap with the upsc but uh, fm part is completely a new thing but somewhere around when i went through the syllabus i found that those topics like derivatives or kind of fixed income instruments and alternative investment i mean alternative investment channels and risk management these kind of things were something very much was very much interesting to me so even though it was difficult to learn but i thought that uh, somewhere around that would be fruitful enough If you put in some effort, especially the management part, what I understood was that um, even though it was very, it was one of the most toughest thing for me to learn as far as the mains is concerned for RBI Grade B because it is completely new syllabus, and also it consists of lot of theories and lot of uh, scholars, and we need to remember them. We need to kind of have some cross linkages between various theories, and these kind of things has to work out in the time of examinations. So even though it was very difficult, but somehow I. depended only on the notes of institutes um, and because i didn't have the time to go through the various standard books that is been prescribed in the notification of rba so i just try, my main focus was to manage the time because i wanted to use the i mean wanted to study the entire syllabus within the minimal possible time so my entire focus was on using the notes provided by the institutes only i used the edutap notes for management and i use the mock exams for various of various institutes so as you just mentioned about the topics but one thing i want here is that there are many students who are listening to you who will be of that opinion that because if they are weak in management they are not if they are not from commerce background they are weak in management so what should be their approach have you read each and every topic of the management even in your first or second third attempt also because if when we talk first or second attempt it you have just given for for a, for a, for the sake purpose only but third attempt you were serious so in the third attempt have you read each and every topic of management or were it of or was it of a that sort you know i should read some selected topics because this is these are the important topics which are creating which are getting heavy weightage and these are the only topics which could help me in clearing this examination also Uh, so coming to the management part, actually I covered the entire syllabus almost from end to end. I covered the syllabus of management alone. But in the uh, in terms of I mean the from the point of view of finance, I just covered all the selected topics because uh, I mean I selected this because there is always an inherent risk that uh, the topics that you miss out could also be asked for the exam. But still, from the previous year's questions, what I understood was that um, in finance part there are certain areas which are of I mean, uh, the questions are frequently repeated, repeated in the sense that from that same area, you know, the exact question. So, I was just selecting the kind of topics and uh, finishing the main topics like the um, RBA Act and the functions of RBA and the current affairs related to RBA and the reports raised by RBA because these kind of the things are going to be asked in plenty. Then the uh, topics related to the banking sector, changing landscape of the banking sector in India, and these kind of actually and risk management. These kind of areas are what I thought was that it was something like a favorite area of. are big grade b exam because they used to ask consistently in some way or the other from these topics and for the objective as well as for the descriptive uh, but it, when it come to the aspect of management i covered it end to end because uh, for some i don't know what made me drive um, what made me take a decision like that but uh, luckily i think that was a very good a very right decision because management part is a very fruitful part because even though it might be difficult to learn but if you are able to cover the syllabus in entirety i am not saying you need to go into the depth of the each and every topics in management just cover the entire width of the syllabus that would be enough is what i believe 
from my last two attempts the third and fourth attempt i got really good marks in my fnm so what i believe is that covering the entire syllabus properly in a decent manner is enough rather than going to the depth and of each and every topic especially in the case of management so that's what i did my strategy was to cover the entire topics and to revise the topics uh, whenever i get the time so as you mentioned about these much topics that you were so much into this examination of rpa grade b so tell us a little bit about if we just go a little bit about this management and finance topics you have just mentioned here because in the same time you have been selected for your bank examination also if i yeah, talk about the you have been you have been selected as an assistant manager in union bank of india if i talk about yeah. it so because if i talk about your journey one thing i want just want to make a relation here is that you have shifted from upsc now to bank examination sir so, your prime goal was rbi sir so, so then you have set for the examination so what was the thing when you got selected for the for the for, as an assistant manager so were you of that opinion you have made the decision okay i will be joining there or were you of that opinion okay i have got a job let me just wait uh let me just wait or let me just take a decision okay i will not be joining here because my only goal is rbi so was it that kind of a thought also that also mm -hmm. comes to your mind because considering everything you have prepared you were so much into this examination you have well versed with the rbi act rbi notification reports and even in your third attempt you have given the interview also so Yes, so what was the thought at that point of time when you were joining um, the job as an assistant manager sir actually the main thing was that uh, what i felt was that uh, given my age a job was very much necessary at that time of age or that time of that point of time that's what i felt it personally in my case so for me a job in hand was definitely a source of because source of confidence because we have at the end of the day we have something in our hand we are not losing it out completely so uh, definitely my decision was to join the exam the join the bank as 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 i mean as early as possible when i got the job there is no thought of uh, prolonging the joining time or just uh, leaving it out this time so the thing was that um, even in my fourth attempt also whenever i was going to write the exam at the back of my mind there is a feeling that okay you have a job in hand even in case if you are not able to clear it it's fine still you have a job in hand because in my case i'm already married so i mean it's not just about the kind of stability because there is also some other aspects related to our personal life so for me job was definitely an important aspect and uh, for me it only just improved my confidence to prepare it for a better way the only thing was that the time management was a bit difficult thing because uh, while doing a job especially a bank job it is a bit tedious and time time consuming job so definitely will be having a very less time to prepare so the thing is that since it was my fourth attempt and i was able to use my cumulative kind of an uh, what is a kind of benefits that i earned from the preparation phase right from 2018 onwards i mean in case of rbi grade b also there are descriptive portions so to structure an answer was something which i learned in the phase of civil service preparation because in there also we have to write a lot of answers in the uh, mains exam so we have to structure the answer properly so that kind of aspects actually helped me in my fourth attempt and also since my my third attempt i was able to sincerely prepare and i was also i was also able to make some short notes on various topics especially management uh, my main focus in the fourth attempt was just to revise it maximum as as much as possible so that i don't remember i mean i don't have the issue of remembering out any kind of theories or any kind of static portions and the only the current affairs part was the challenge in my fourth attempt because with given the limited time i need to manage the current affairs and for that current affairs again we also need to have our own shortcuts because uh, for me as i said since the time was the main difficult factor i had to dip, I, i was depending more on the youtube videos in case of prelims or in the case of mains because the last time i mean the last moment revisions like the marathon sessions and all was very useful because somewhere around we get a confidence that okay we have learned this or covered this kind of topics of these many months even if we have been actually prepared in notes for those months so that was the case and that was my case for me i mean ultimately for the answer for that question is that the job was definitely a source of confidence the only thing was that time had to be managed effectively so just uh, mentioned everything that i was just going to ask you about the time here but you have answered it very brilliantly but the, the only thing that i want to ask here is because considering the time and everything that you have mentioned i just want to ask you two questions here one thing is that how cooperative was your banking employees with you because do they know about this thing that yes you are preparing for this examination your bank manager and your colleagues were they helping you on that sort my first question is that second question is because you have just mentioned about the youtube videos or the marathon sessions so 
what should be the strategy how you have strategized yourselves with respect to the videos and how you were managing your time with respect to your preparation considering the time you have okay so actually in the coming to the first question uh, definitely my all my colleagues uh, my seniors everyone knew that i was preparing for this exam because when i joined the bank itself they would ask like okay i mean are you going to settle with this job or are you going to prepare for any other exams and in case if you're preparing for other exam what is what are the kind of exam that you're preparing they used to ask all these questions and definitely when i'm saying that i'm preparing for rb grade b definitely they used to encourage me the only good thing they can they do they can do is that they can encourage me and they can support me mentally because everyone is busy with their own works but they used to con uh, consistently ask me about okay are you preparing or uh, in what stage of preparation you are when is the exam so are you confident enough like that they used to inquire me i mean every now and then i have worked in two branches by that time in both the branches i have got a very receptive uh, colleagues my branch managers especially because they were also very cooperative enough they were also very you know they didn't kind of give me unwanted pressures or unwanted targets in between this i mean like they used to manage it very very effectively uh, and so i was able to prepare it in a decent manner because uh, i was not mentally stressed out in these two branches maybe it was because of my training phase i mean but it still it was like a, such a great thing and even my coordinators also in the staff colleges of union bank also very, was very much supportive they used to tell me that okay definitely if you are preparing for it give you 100% uh, i mean whatever support you, i need i mean they were they were ready to give even my one of my coordinator his name is didin gosavi <clears throat> he's from maharashtra actually so he used to tell me that um, you know, even in case of interview also um in case if i am facing any difficulties in finding the materials that he used he used to say that even after his office time he used he said he was ready to give me the materials like he will search the materials for me i need not waste my time searching for the study materials like that he used to say so that kind of reception i have received from my colleagues and my coordinators and coming to the second part of the question as far as any working experience is concerned i think the biggest challenge for them is to manage the time so the managing time is definitely an individual aspect it varies from individual to individual because it is all about building a confidence level before the exam the way in which you build the confidence level before the exam would definitely be different for different kind of persons but as far as my case is concerned for me uh, to have a feeling of a cover a holistic coverage of the syllabus is something that gives me a lot of confidence and in my case i used to prepare in the case of prelims i would say i, I was able to prepare the notes only for the last 3 months before the prelims exam so it is ideally it is good that you can prepare for 6 months it's usually it is said like that because questions can come around from the last 6 months before the exam so in my case i was able to prepare meticulously only for the last 3 months of the uh, current affairs so in my case i used to go through the videos especially your videos wherein because you used to link various aspects in within the 100 questions you used to describe around 300 questions that kind of aspect wherein you are going to link it you know that kind of gestures and kind of linkages with various other government schemes and reports you definitely help me a lot because you will be able to remember those things even if you are not able to remember the exact word or exact scheme just because of those gestures and those kind of small small diagrams that you draw on the board so these kind of things actually really help me a lot in my prelims preparation and coming to the main so also the marathon session will actually help us in revising the topics and especially the sessions where the reports and government schemes have been discussed because uh, as far as the esa portion is concerned it is like in a ocean it will definitely will not be covered the entire syllabus and they can ask the schemes and reports from anywhere and anything so you know every time when i watch a video definitely i get a new information or new idea that i should actually I actually the idea which i actually missed so that actually gave me insight and i was able to cover it. i mean i didn't go beyond the videos because i knew that i need to restrict my study materials because if i am not restricting my study materials i will not be able to revise it properly just before I mean, just before the few days for just few days before the exam so in my case that was the thing so youtube videos were definitely one of the main source of material for me for my study because it's not just it was for me it was not just a study material it was a source of confidence building measure, uh, confidence building activity first of all the thanks for sharing your feedback on the marathon session so it it kind of a it kind of feels gives me a great pleasure that the things that we are doing in these sessions they are help, helping the aspirants like you but if we now let's talk about little bit about your phase one examination because you have mentioned about the very videos and you were you have just mentioned that you were good in quant reasoning or english but still if i talk about this year examination considering because you were preparing for this examination you have already prepared for upsc you have given the you have cleared the uh, examinations or banking examination 
So in this attempt, tell me this the whole experience, the bunch of experience that you have with different set of examinations that you are giving continuously. When you sit in this year examination, because this year examination is not a usual RBX examination. Every section in this year examination was difficult. So if we can start it from quant, reasoning or English, and if we end it with general awareness, it's it's not an easy thing that we can walk on. So when you sit on when you sit in the examination, so what was the feeling that you have? Considering the experience that you have. Uh, sir, in my case, even though I was pretty confident in the case of reasoning and quant, since I am from engineering background, I also know about the fact that the RBI exam was getting tougher and tougher year by year. So definitely my main focus was on to create, clear the sectional cutoff for both these um, reasoning and quant because I have seen many aspirants who might be clearing the overall cutoff uh, with their overall marks, but they are missing out with the sectional cutoffs, especially the reasoning and quant. So my main focus was that I should definitely be attempting around 20 questions for reasoning and around 15 questions for quant. This was my basic plan before the exam. And as far as English is concerned, for some reason, by the grace of God, I was able to do it very, very well in, in all the attempts that I gave for RBA. Even the first two attempts, which were which was given without any preparation, also I was able to good, score good marks in English alone. English alone. In my third and fourth attempt, also I continued that trend. I was able to score in a very comparatively very good manner in English. But quant and reasoning, as I said, it is a, actually a very kind of a risky area because they used to ask very tough questions. And I feel that it is the level of the question that is being asked for reasoning and quant in RBA grade B exam is higher than the level that has been asked in the case of IBPS mains. Uh, because in reasoning for IBPS mains, it is like uh, you, are, have to, you have to do 45 questions in 60 minutes. And some of the questions get is two marks. So like if you're finishing the two mark question, you'll get almost some 10 to 15 questions in one single go. But in the case of RB grade B, it is the other way around. It is like 60 questions you have to do in 45 minutes. And with the same level of difficulty or maybe even higher level of difficulty. So definitely the challenge was that I should clear the sectional cutoff in the case of reasoning and the case of quant. So in both the section, my main strategy was that don't hang around with any questions. Just uh, skip and skip and go to the end of the questions and make sure that you are attempting all the easy questions. Because there may be some 10, in the case of reasoning out of the 60 questions, there may be around some 10 to 12 questions which are very easy and very doable. So we should never miss those questions, but, but those, those questions would not be coming in together. They would be spread out around the entire 60 questions. So my first aim was that I cover the entire 60 questions and make sure that I am not missing out on any silly questions or simple questions. And the next thing is that is a gamble for gamble in my case, because my main practice was that I used to attempt one puzzle. I wouldn't suggest for all the aspirants because Usually, I was, I, I was able to score, I mean, solve puzzle, the puzzles in the case of IBPS mains or in the case of RBA grade B attempts in, the, in my previous attempt also. But this time around, uh, it was again a matter of a very big risk because I started solving one puzzle and I thought it was just a one variable puzzle. But after moving on to the depth of the puzzle, I understood that it was two variable and it involved blood relation along with the sitting arrangement. So it was a kind of a very risky task. and. I, I wasted around some 20, 15 to 20 minutes on that single puzzle itself, but luckily that last moment I was able to solve it. Or else, I, if for a moment I thought that, okay, this exam is not going to clear the problems because after spending around some 15 time also, I was not able to solve the puzzle. So it was just a just by chance that this time I solved the puzzle. So again, I wouldn't suggest that kind of an aspect. It is better to do other questions other than the puzzles because puzzle is always risky. Like the thing is that at that time of the exam, you might be under a lot of pressure. And even if you are someone who is capable enough to do it, under the pressure, you might not be able to solve it. So <clears throat> that is the case of the reasoning. And in the case of quant also, what I found is that in my last two attempts, there are definitely some eight to nine questions, which are very easy and doable out of the 30 questions. I mean, out of the 25 questions that is being asked. I mean, I'm not remembering exactly, I mean, 30 questions. Exactly. 30 questions. Yeah. So around some eight to 10 questions will be very easy. Very easy in the sense it is doable at least. So those eight to 10 questions is going to decide your selection because if you are going to do that properly, you are going to get the answer and you're going to get at least eight to 10 marks. And the, usually for the past two to three years, the actual cut of a quant is around some five marks. So doing that itself will be a good thing in the case of quant. So for quant and reasoning, my basic strategy is that uh, to ensure that we are uh, catching the low hanging fruits, you are doing all the easy questions. And uh, it is better always to better to leave the difficult questions because at the end of the day, the main thing is that you need to clear the overall cutoff. And coming to the overall aspect of the prelims, the main deciding factor of the selection is the GA aspect. I mean, the GA 
part, general awareness part. Yeah, around 80 questions has been asked for the prelims. And it is always better to aim around 40 or maybe even higher than 40 marks in the case of prelims. Because nowadays it is getting tough. Early in 2018 or 19, I believe people used to score around 60, 65 marks at that point of time because the questions were much more direct at that time. But nowadays it is getting much more difficult and they are asking a lot of reports. And it is very difficult to uh, kind of prepare for every each and every reports uh, that is being in the paper. So the thing is that uh, for GA again, as I said, uh, I wanted to prepare it very holistically. But the thing is that time was the main difficult constraint in my case. So again, I depend on the YouTube videos primarily. And I also depend on the last minute, uh, some kind of compilation PDF that is being given by the institutes because um, I, my main strength was that I relied on the compilations of the last minute, uh, last minute revision because those things consisted of various elements holistically covered from various parts of the syllabus. So that actually helped me to revise the questions also properly. And that was the main good thing I think I did for the prelims. And the prelims GA also, I, score, I was able to score around some 40 marks, I think. So it was completely safe. I can say the GA, if you have scored 40 marks, that's really good marks this year, if exactly. you consider it. Because they, it, it would be one of the highest marks if you consider this year's GA. Because the questions are really, really being in depth and only 25 minutes was there. Yes, so sir. now if you have talked about this phase one exam, you have really elaborated in a very good manner here. But if I talk about considering for coming from phase one to phase two now. Now phase two, it's being it is being said also, but if we look at this examination, it's comparatively easy if we compare it with phase one. Do you agree on this thing that yes, this was a case here, or do you feel no? It is it looks easy, but still that examination also has its own challenges that needs to be there, that needs to be resolved. Yes. Sir, in my opinion, I go with the second opinion because definitely it has its own challenges. Even though it might look easy, I mean, the FM part is comparatively doable, is what I believe. Even though it is difficult to study, but if you are able to put in some time and effort, definitely it is a very doable subject. Uh, but in the case of ESI, I think it is the quest level of question is getting even tougher from the prelims. It is like just taking off from the prelims, uh, from where the prelims just stopped. Because in the ESI, they ask a lot of prelim, I mean, a lot of government reports and government schemes. And all these things are very difficult to uh, revise, and uh, it is very difficult to go through each and every PAB news in more information that is giving uh, that, that is coming up. And uh, especially given the fact that it is very, there is already very less time be between the prelims and mains, so ESI part actually for me was very very difficult. And I have always felt that the uh, objective questions for the ESI is comparatively, I mean, it's kind of a gamble because sometimes around uh, the preparation alone would not suffice luck also should favor you this is what i felt in my last two attempts because it's in case if you prioritize the topics properly definitely you will be having some good advantage over the others but i think as for fm it is as I, as you said it is a comparatively doable subject i mean a comparatively easier subject not only in the uh, the way in the way with, with it is structured and the way in which the questions are asked also comparatively predictable in nature if you are going to study Especially as I said, before, especially if you're covering the entire width of the syllabus. But the thing is that the latest challenge in this exam is that there is a descriptive part, uh, which is there from the last two or three attempts, uh, the last two or three years. The descriptive part also, the thing is, the one of the main challenges that we need to manage our typing speed. And also in my case, my advice would be that in case of descriptive, it is always better to attempt every questions instead of leaving any questions because in descriptive, if you can attempt it, you will get at least a few marks, which is not something that you can get in objective. Because objective, it is like either it is a right answer or it is a wrong answer. There is nothing, there is no midway in the objective part. But for the descriptive part, definitely, if you are able to write an average answer itself, you could get some around some 50% or 60% of the marks if you could manage. The next thing is that the time limit and the word limit. The usually people, I could see people used to go behind the word limit and try to complete the Suppose, for instance, if I take an example, there are 50 marker questions and the word limit is 600 words. I could see some of the aspirants who are uh, trying their level, level best to cover the 600 words. But the thing is that once you are focusing only on covering one single question, you might miss out on one entire question the other side. So my advice would be that even if you are able to cover with just 75% or 80% of the word limit itself, try to compare, complete the entire descriptive questions without leaving any questions. And uh, the, Third aspect is that the part of English, the part B. In my case, in my third attempt also, the biggest mistake that I have done was that I was a bit overconfident. I thought that I could manage English very well. 
but uh, somewhere around i was not able to write a proper essay even after writing the exam also i also personally felt that the essay was not of that a good way and the pressy writing also was also not very proper in my case that's what i felt after the exam and rightly after seeing the result also my exam my marks in the english was comparatively lower than the others so this time my main focus was that english is even though if it is a doable subject we need to practice we cannot ignore the aspect of practice in the even in the case of english you need to practice a few essays and a few pressy before going to the exam and it is advisable to give at least one or two full mocks of english exam also because usually in my third attempt also i used to completely ignore english and i used to give mocks only for the essay and fm part and that actually cost me a lot uh, so this said this time also my advice would be that we we, we, sh- we don't have the leverage of neglecting any topics but of course we need to take some calculated risk in can in the essay and fm part i mean fm this is um, finance part we can selectively choose some uh, topics and learn but of course there is an element of risk So I think you again have elaborated really well in the with respect to phase two. Also, as you have mentioned, the luck plays a very favor role in with respect to ESI objective part because this year, if I can talk about mission lifestyle, the question has been asked in the phase two examination, which was something the students were expecting in phase one. Same goes for Ishram portal. These two topics were somehow on an expected line, and the students have performed well also with respect yeah. to these topics, and. as you have, i think one thing that you have mentioned here is that its men majority of students must learn here is with respect to essay descriptive this is a very mm-hmm. great point that you have mentioned is because do not take it in a granted that you will be scoring always good marks in essay descriptive so, so you have faced on that thing now it, it this was about phase 1 and phase 2 and when i talk about interview here so this is something that is uh, that i am quite interested here to uh, hear about this because uh, you have given the you have been selected as an as an as an assistant manager you are have been carrying a uh, experience of this examination from upsc to rbi to assistant manager so what was your interview all about so tell me about that thing how much the interviews have grilled you with respect to your examination preparation the choices that you have made in your career uh, sir my third attempt i mean third attempt of rbi grade b that was the first time i went for interview At that time the interview is comparatively smooth i never i mean i didn't face a lot of grilling in fact i never faced any kind of grilling at that third in the third interview i mean third attempt uh, the questions were much more uh, general in nature they just asked me basic questions about my banking career the kind of duties that i do in the bank but that was also time where i was just getting to the bank i was just having some one month or one and a half month of experience in bank so they were just asking the basic questions like uh, you know what is this kyc what is the legal mandate of kyc and these kind of and what are the union i mean the, my specifically my bank initiatives on very serious like financial inclusion or the digitization or what is a what is my view on bank privatization some basic questions um, but i was not able to answer one not one question from the chairman um, but after the interview i thought that i had done in a very good manner because i was overall i was not able to answer this one question and the rest of the question that was asked to me also was comparatively kind of a doable way because they were asking general they, they were not specific in any questions it was like an opinion based question so we definitely had some leverage to tell our opinion but i don't know what happened i got just scored 45 marks uh, i mean that was i won't i wouldn't say that is a below average mark it is just an, maybe just an above average marks but that marks wouldn't be enough uh, in case if you are just clearing the mains by some five or six marks or maybe even 10 marks uh but coming to this time this attempt i am going to the interview after my one and a half almost one and a half years of bank experience and i have mentioned that i was working in the area of credit analysis and credit processing uh, especially in the case of M- especially in the area of msme so definitely from the starting of the interview onwards uh, i mean one or two panelists were specific in the questions they were asking compared to i mean they were asking more into the cbdc aspect even though i prepared for the cbdc in a very holistic manner still one main thing which i which i thought that i missed out after the interview is that there was a document on cbdc released by rb which i didn't which i never read and they asked specifically one or two topics from that report because i read the report after my interview and understood was the question was like a verbatim question from the report and i missed it out so i mean like uh, around some five to six question was asked on cbdc and those two questions i missed out Uh, and apart from that they were just asking a very very lot of things especially in the in my bio data i have just mentioned that uh, i have done some seminar on risk management in my staff college and all so definitely a lot of questions related to risk management was asked 
somehow by the grace of god the risk management questions were doable for me uh, but apart from that they went on to ask the they went on to ask about the legal aspects of banking and related to that an mbfc central which i was not able to answer very well and i felt that the atmosphere also was not so friendly in my fourth attempt because they you they just went a bit ahead of what i was expecting and i felt that it was possibly a bit of grilling because always uh, the panelist members also had a kind of a smile that okay this guy is not so prepared i mean maybe to, uh, deliberately they may be doing it for intimidating me but for some reason i felt that that more overall atmosphere was not so good and after the interview what i felt was that uh, okay this time i'm not going to clear it because it was kind of a uh, completely shattered my ex- expectations because i expected that after these many kind of preparations uh, the help that i would get from the upsc preparations and or i used to read the newspapers regularly i have worked in the bank in the area of credit so with all these things what i expected was that i would be definitely doing a very good way but the interview what i would when was very much uh, not not at all as per my expectations but luckily i was able to clear it but again my marks just came today this around 52 marks this not again it's not a very good mark but still it's fine that's all and you have just mentioned the very thing that yes you might be feeling it's a grilling but they might be of that opinion that they were testing you on something that you have done so it was of yeah. that thing but if i talk about because you were in a bank and it is generally something that always comes to a mind of a student is because you have been given this you have given the entry of rbi you have been selected in a bank and then you are working somewhere in the bank so there might be some feeling that we should not give a mock interview so were you also of that opinion that because i am settled somewhere i should, i know what are the kind of things they will be asking us because even your banking uh, uh, colleagues are also helping you with respect to the materials that is important here so were you of that opinion that i should give mock interview or you were of that thing okay i should not give a mock interview because that will not be that much helpful so what was the thing dear sir in my case uh, right from the beginning onwards right from the starting of my any preparation be it upsc or bank exam or rbi mock exam was my main focus or the core area of my preparation it was my central point of preparation even for this interview also i was attempting all kinds of mock which wherever it is possible because of course i had the time limitations so whenever i used to get the time i used to register for the mock test in various educational platforms and that is the main thing in which i relied upon because i knew that i would be better i would be getting better and i would be learning about my mistakes only by doing the mocks whether it is prelims mains or in interview so even in the case of interview also i, I is the mock exam the mock interviews that actually help me a lot because it actually every time when i give a mock exam a mock interview i used to get some good insights maybe regarding my gestures maybe regarding the way in which i answer or maybe regarding the way in which i used to present an answer i mean the structuring of an answer so all these things actually played a part so maybe somewhere around i feel always feel that mock interview is very much useful for me and that, that is the case so have you been grilled in some any mock interviews also as you have been grilled in the final interview any mock interview not just this year in the even in the past also have you been grilled or you were when you sit in the final interview are you being remembered about this thing okay, I, i was grilled about that thing <laughs> way back You know, no, in, the, in the case of mock interview, actually, so the grilling doesn't happen on the same lines of the original interview because in the original interview they are a bit more serious. In the in, but in the case of the mock interviews, the people come with an attitude of helping us. Ultimately, the aim is to make us uh, improve and to help us improve. So definitely, even though they may be grilling in their question, they will follow up with a kind of a kind of a soothing advice. Okay, and see, it's not uh, it's not your issue. Many of the candidates are like this, so just be calm, just be careful. and they used to come up with the advices with the follow on advices so that we don't feel that kind of a grilling in the case of mock interviews but definitely it was useful and the case of original interview they are not going to advise you in any manner they just going to grill and grill and grill so we have discussed about your journey here but uh, before i conclude the session i just wanted to two things because you have been preparing this examination and it's been a long journey it's been a journey of i can say around 5 to 6 years of journey of this whole examination cycle that you have went through So there were being there will always be many ups and downs. So will you be will you like to share some low points that were with you and that have kind of not I will not say hard, that is a hard heart broken for you but that is kind of a thing that has broken you up in this journey and how you have mm-hmm. overcome about these points. Um, sir, if I could recollect, actually there were two main areas of a very low low point in my life. I mean, my course of preparation. one thing is that when i still remember it is around october 2021 i 
at that point of time i was giving my exams for around three three different kind of exams and i was expecting a positive result in at least two of them but uh, for unfortunately on all the three exams i was not able to clear so that was very one of the very lowest point in my life because i was completely shattered because uh, i have been preparing for some two to three years before prior to that particular uh, month and uh, even then i was not able to clear at any of the exams at that point of time and i was completely thinking about what was going wrong or whether i would be able to make it right in at, at any point of time even if i'm getting a chance also i was under a severe under some self conscious attitude and uh, the thing is that at that point of time it was my parents and my wife who supported me a lot because they used to come and encourage me and they used to come they actually they used to have more faith in me than me than what i had in me so it was like they were always coming up with some all good advices and all good kind of a courageous i mean they, i mean they were kind of a pillars of support for me in in the course of journey and that is how i came out of that kind of low point and started preparing for bank exams since then because i thought that the preparation strategies and the kind of choices that i made was wrong so definitely i need to correct that and in my change of decisions also my parents and my wife stood behind beside me they also supported me in the decisions that i took even after that and the second low point is that uh, my third attempt in the rbi rbi in grade b which i gave i reached up to the interview and the interview was over by around uh, my interview was over by august 2022 and the result of the exam came just two days before my marriage so that was again a hard break because uh, even myself and my family members my wife my in laws everyone were expecting a positive result and especially i also knew that it would be coming around the time of my marriage itself uh, but like unluckily again two days before the marriage the result came that i am i was not able to find my roll number in the final list so that was a hard break for not, not just for me but again for everyone but that was the time when i thought that okay i'm going to end the entire sets of preparation i'm not going to prepare anymore I'm okay. I'm kind of, I mean, like I will be happy with this bank life, or maybe I'll be going for some MBA. That's all. I won't be preparing for any other government exams or RBI exams. But again, it is my parents and my wife and uh, my in-laws who again supported me and asked me to prepare again, and they were ready to give any kind of uh, help. Actually, in in my the phase, second phase, I mean second phase in the sense the RBI grade B for this year, uh, the exam was in July. so before that i was working in in a branch in ernakulam i mean my hometown so i was staying in my home itself luckily so my entire thing was taken care of by my parents and my wife also was very cooperative like uh, she also didn't ask me to come out for any going for any outing or going for any vacation and what she used, she knew that my i am having this examination so she also kept her expectations very low and my parents also were supporting like anything because they were preparing the food they were making everything for me i just need to study and go to the office that's all first everything was taken care of by them and my wife so these kind of pillars of support is what i believe is that i was ultimately able to come out of these kind of low points in my life and luckily i'm here and also they are the ones who are more happy than me i think that's a beautiful journey that you have just shared about the family so i think you have described everything about the the family or uh, the strong the because it's always been said behind every man there is a woman who is stepping mm-hmm. behind i think in your case your wife is a very strong pillar along with your parents in this whole journey but if i now if we can if we say that they were the strong pillars but when they came to know about the result when you have finally achieved the thing for which they was supporting you so what were their initial reactions Uh, have you watched them uh, and and luckily actually i wanted to i mean uh, i actually wanted to see their faces at the time of the result but unfortunately this time when the result came i was in erode in my workplace uh, my wife was in kolkata in her training itc and my parents was in arnavalam in my hometown so i could didn't see any of them any of their faces but still i could when i was talking over the phone i could feel their excitement in their words because they were also falling short of words they were also like you know how I, i don't they were also finding it very difficult to express their happiness and even my case also i was also very stunned by the result because as i said my interview didn't went uh, well as as much as i expected so even i also was personally very much uh, taken away by the result and i used to send the pdf to my wife and asked her to check twice and thrice because i also was not sure about it like but somehow the exp- and the kind of situation that was there was completely you know i don't know even to express that in any words but it was good
And I'm just, uh, I'm just thankful to the court for the situation. I mean, for the kind of a moment that was given to me. So now the final result when he's come now, now, now you are planning your vacation with your wife also. Now is she happy? Okay, that the thing <laughs> yeah, has yeah. now come up and now we should go for a vacation. <laughs> yeah, 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 we should definitely. <laughs> Okay, so if uh, it was quite good, Shridhar, if I, the the thing that we have talked about, but if we just conclude this session, the final thing that you want to share with an aspirant from the journey that you have, the success that you finally have achieved, anything, any message you want to give to the students? Um, sir, one thing that I would like to think always is that uh, there is a kind of a small code, like uh, even this will pass away. So I'm, this advice is just for the people who are actually finding it difficult to face the situation, especially the ones who might have not cleared this time after reaching the interview. Because I know the situation very well. It is a very heartbreaking situation. But the thing is that, as like I said, it is like even this will pass away. Even this bad situation will pass away and the good, one, good situations will come in future. So it is just a matter of a time that we just need to have some faith in ourselves. So that's what I believe. And... I think that's one very great advice that you have shared to the students. And I can see some sort of, not tears, but a sort of emotion <laughs> that is coming, that is pouring around from your voice now. So I think that was really great. I think it's really great to to hear from you your journey. Uh, so I again wish you all the best for the dreams that you have read. And now is the final question. Is there anything that is left now? Talking about UPSC. Is it still no. on the card? So, oh, it's, it's it's the time to settle down now. No, no, I won't be. I mean, actually, I've taken the decision. I won't be preparing for UPSC again. This is, this will be the final place where I would be working. Is what I believe. But I would be trying to learn again because, as such, uh, as I believe that uh, the learning is something that we is not, that is not going to end in one day or two day or maybe any day because that is something that has to be carried on in our entire life and especially to work in RBA, it is. Um, much more of a responsibility than just a kind of a job because they are going to handle some difficult tasks and definitely we need to have that kind of an attitude of continuous learning only then we'll be able to perform well is what I believe but definitely I actually should remind myself that uh, this is not the this is not the final uh, phase of your life the learning should continue and I should learn many more new things because I'm still just a starter in the any career in the especially in the case of finance and banking so definitely there are a lot of things that I should learn and uh, I should have that attitude also. That's what I believe. Thanks but in the case of UPSC preparation, this is this is a call for it because I am not going to prepare <laughs> for UPSC. I mean, like I find it that this job will be much suitable for me than UPSC. Uh, so thanks a lot, Shirinath, for giving us your time and I think it was really nice talking to you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much.